Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending upon your time zone. My name is Pastor Yemi Omogbo Yega. God bless you. I want to talk on Dele Farotimi, uh, the Nelson Mandela of Nigeria. Dele Farotimi is the current Nelson Mandela of Nigeria. And I will explain. <clears throat> Thank God for the lifetimes of late Kanifa Waimi. Thank God today that um, uh, President Bola Ahmed Tinumbu is one of those who also championed the cause of uh, democracy in Nigeria. Thank God for the efforts of late MKO Abiola, who lost his life in the process of making Nigeria better. Thank God for uh, this Baba, late Abraham Adesanya. Thank God for the likes of our Baba, the pioneer of it all politically, late Baba Jeremiah Aulawo. And Thank God for the showing cars of this world, for the Fumi Lions, late Fumi Fumi Lions of this world. Thank God for the late Taisho learnings of this world. How many people will I mention? Too many of them. These are many more uh, people, are uh, the people, late Bolaigi lost his life in the process. Even his entire family almost went into extinction. Thank God that at least there are survivors today. And I know that the banner that their father held will not go into extinction. Um, when we talk of, and thank God now for the current man, Dele Faro Timi, uh, an ex-student of the Lagos State University. I always wonder why Faro Timi, who, is, who graduated from Lagos State, will wage war against the likes of President Bola Ahmed Tinubu of the Lagos State. <laughs> and uh, also... We appreciate God in Lagos State University that uh, we are not left out in the struggle. Luta continua. We all knew what it was in the 80s and 90s, what uh, Lasso used to be. I can't even take back money, money by in everything. In law, they didn't waste time in taking over the leadership in law uh, consecutively for a few years. They were in the lead, producing the best uh, graduating law students. And of course, you know the period of late, uh, I think Madame is still alive. May your life live long. May you live long. You have contributed immensely. Thank God for your efforts also in family matters. Uh, Mrs. Jadisola Akonde. I mean, when it was the um, VC of the Lagos State University, you know, it was a riotous period. But, Madam, I, I recognize your contribution to the world of the family because your 
proposal or your bill then that scaled became law in Nigeria was what led to what revolutionized the family. The oppression that was going on in the family was you that finally brokered <coughs> the peace that is reigning today, whereby a child that comes into this world is categorized as legitimate and illegitimate just by the circumstances of their birth. Thank God that somebody like you rose, that every child has a father and they should stop talking about illegitimacy or legitimacy. Every child is a child of God. Even the child that King David gave birth to through Bathsheba, the wife of Uriah, King Solomon, eventually uh, became the ruler of Israel. That's to tell you that God Almighty did not discriminate against anybody. If it is bad, if anybody impregnates, impregnates anybody, no matter the closeness or the or can I say sanguineous, or what do you call it? Ness? I don't want to use a big grammar. No matter what the level of blood relationship is, a father impregnates his daughter. A, a brother impregnates his sister. Um, you know, whatever, whatever. A relative impregnates somebody from the same family. You know, the only problem that is a the only problem that comes out of that is the issue of um the is it the gene now? I'm not a medical doctor. All I know is that the children they will produce will not be as strong and they may be prone to health issues because people are supposed to spread out to have you know to, to socialize so that you don't have the same blood group in every family. Families don't restrict themselves. It's part of God's arrangement that you spread out. So if any child is brought into the world through such, uh, you can call it immoral. Yeah, it's immoral. Let's, I mean, immoral, unrighteous path. That does, it is the perpetrators of the sin or offense that is affected. It's not that child. That child is the child of God. God does not want any child to die. I mean, to be stigmatized or to be isolated or to be treated as if they are not human beings. The child is a human being and again, is a child of God. A child before God is a child. But in our traditions, we discriminate against such people. So you are the one that took away the sorrows the disgrace, the ostracization of such innocent children that came into the world. You fought, you won. That's your contribution to humanity, particularly in Nigeria. So I really revere you, madam. I just digress to that side so that we we'll know how great your own contribution is. So nobody can call anybody on my lead today because every child has a father. You prove the point. God bless you. Now, as I said, every generation will have its own voice and the world is moving. Like I did say earlier, Nigeria is not static. It's just that it is so slow. And the reason we're able to compare that Nigeria is terribly slow or is terribly, or we call it bad, or is, you know, that is provoking... Uh, and to bad governance and all that is because we have other advanced countries to compare with. And I told you that these countries we are comparing ourselves with, they went through this process. If Britain can colonize places like America up to the Middle East, up to Africa here, Nigeria, and they've not even left us alone. If Britain can do that, or America itself, before getting its independence in 1776, you know what that means, that they had to struggle to get things done. You know, that is why that statement, all men are created equal. You know, it is still the same 
struggle. But today, it is better for them. We too, we are on the path. That's why when anybody is talking of um, um, seceding or secession or whatever, I don't subscribe to it. It's not the population, sorry, it's not the composition. The population may be a problem because we are not disciplined. We are just producing, we are mass producing children that people don't plan for. One of the things that will help us to reduce the burdens we have is to produce less children and give the few that will produce good cares. I've cited so many examples of that. So uh, Nigeria is evolving and we are moving. It is slow, yes. And I told you we are able to realize that because we are now enlightened in the, media, in the days of social media. Thank God. So, but every generation has its own voice. The uh, Ganifa means, and all, many of these people that I mentioned, many, many more. Is it Papa Rewani or the people from the north uh, up to, um, what's his name? Balarabi Musa, um, Baba, the peace talk the, of GNPP, Great Nigeria People's Party, Baba Waziri Ibrahim, and so, or uh, is it the their predecessors like the um, Baba uh, Tafawa Balewa, Nabdi Azikwe from the East, and or uh, is it people of great stature like uh, the Chino Achebes of this world, or as the um, who wrote the troubles with Nigeria, or as the people uh, and the other was Cipriani Quincy, the author, and others, or, or people like. Um, um, what's his name now? The, there are a lot of them. So Nigeria is really, really blessed. That's why I'm just wondering. I say, forget about all these secession. Secession is not our problem. It's not the issue. Tribalism is not even the issue. So it is just for us to focus. Now, thank God, a voice has arisen. And that is Dele Faro Timi. Dele Faro Timi is the Nelson Mandela of Nigeria for today. Lest I forget, please pardon me. Overnight, I got over 100 subscribers, new subscribers. I just want to really appreciate you. I just want to really appreciate. I thank you all, both the people subscribed up to 439 that I had before, and those of you shifted it from 439 to 529, as at the time I'm recording, it's just marvelous, 90 people overnight. You are just like, um, uh, you are just like somebody whom, who have just become born again Christian. Honestly, I say, I love you. Your efforts will not be in vain. Let us come round and begin to defend this nation. We have no other nation. Just like Dele Faro Timi, we are not running anywhere. We are staying here to fight the cause of this nation. We may travel for holidays. Honestly speaking to me, going abroad is, to me, is best for holidays. For especially those of us who are no longer young to say that we are looking for greener pasture. I knew what I experienced in this nation. And anytime I think of it and see that the nation is still like this, I feel very bad. But all the same, what will I do? I won't cause, but I would rather continue to, to speak out. The greatest revolution is a verbal revolution. The greatest revolution you can ever find. Let us all continue to talk and talk and talk. And then continue to subscribe and encourage those who are talking. I know it's not, not everybody is gifted to talking, but even your reaction, your subscription, your sharing, your pressing the notification button so that you get to know when we upload new ones, they are very, very vital to make this nation better. So the Lefaro to me has arisen, and the point is clear. He's a lawyer. And... He has manifested our training. I'm a lawyer too, by profession. We were trained to 
see justice. That's why they call us officers in the temple of justice. We were trained to propagate the truth, to uphold the truth, to defend the truth until justice is achieved. In this country, there is a total injustice that you can think of. Look, as I am here, I always say, even right from my own family, I noticed injustice, great injustice. Amongst members of the family, be it father side, be it mother side, and somebody like me, I am speaking against it. I may not be popular as a result of that. I may not be popular. Those who know me in my family will know that. Look, I'll tell you the truth. I don't seek for popularity. I don't seek for fame. Look at, I'm doing my social media, just having 439. If not that, you know, I now have a need to reach wider audience. I won't even ask for subscription. I'm just doing what I'm doing, saying the truth that I know, but I want that truth to spread out. Now, in the church of God, you will notice, I started my own revolution in the church of God in 2017. 2017. If you check, and I started the route where I left RCCG part 1 and 2. I think part two of that video was viewed by over 12,000 people. And I have not been silent ever since then. Then, um, that is in the religious sector. In any organization where I worked in my life, I have always seen a need to improve whatever is in existence, improve upon whatever is in existence. Those who knew me will know. That is why I usually belong to, when I was a junior staff in the 70s, I used to belong to the unions. When I became the senior staff, I belonged to the senior staff association. I'm always there. And even in my um, study of personnel management, human resources management, I'm a chartered personnel manager, put it, human resources manager. I did all the trainings and passed the examinations, the highest examination up to part three of the Chartered Institute of Personnel Management of Nigeria. I trained and I developed serious interest in industrial relations. And by virtue of my pro pro another profession that, you know, I did before, secretarial studies, have a reason to the uh, personal assistant level, you know, I was able to be exposed to industrial relations. I am a dense student of the industrial relations. And, and that's the area I focused upon most in my uh, in my training or my thesis or something. I wrote something on industrial relations. I can't remember that topic now. I have the book, I have the document at home. So you can see anything that will bring about change, querying the status quo, I am always there. If you meet me with me in a few minutes through discussions, you will see that I will be querying your status. I want to see that thing that needs to be improved in your life and I will start talking about it. So that's, that's me. That's how we are trained as a lawyer to probe into the truth and to find out the truth and then defend the truth. So, and Nelson Mandela was a lawyer. Dele Farotini, a lawyer. Myself, a lawyer. You can see, we have unscrupulous lawyers. Yes, those whom... Uh, whose training 
only helped to perfect their uh, nature of criminality. Those are the people that rely so much on technicality. They are interested only in making money. They, they rely so much on technicality. You see, you are, by our training, you are not bound to win a case. You are not bound to win, but you should do the very best, bringing every um, thing you can lay your hands upon to defend your case, to so do your best to make sure that, you know, your client is... Just a moment, please. Apologies for that short break. So, as I said, um, we are trained to see the truth, follow the truth, defend the truth until justice is achieved. Nigeria needs a revolution. The revolution that we are talking about is not the gun type. We will continue to talk and talk and talk until the truth is out. And just like Dele Farotini said, you know, he's only laying the matters, the facts on the table for us all to discuss. We continue to discuss until we get to the root of the matter, until this nation becomes a nation that we all will be proud of. The judiciary, for instance. Look, I have my own experiences too. Even though I didn't practice the law for a long time, or not, even, I, let's say I'm just, because by the time I was ready, I was already old, not having that energy to pursue it the way I would have if I was younger. But I noticed so many things that even within the judiciary is talking about, which is just laid as an example. It's just an example of the political area, there is trouble. The social area, there is trouble. The economic area, there is trouble. Injustice everywhere. It is a fact. It is a fact. You can't get anything. Today, I've just gathered that um, we have... Thank God it has progressed. The total population of the lawyers in Nigeria, dead mm, and mm. Or alive, is just about 200,000. Ah, I clapped for Nigeria when I got that. Because during the period of my training, there were still 40,000. And I just wonder that 231 million people to a lawyer of 200,000, a ratio of less than two, two, one lawyer to uh, less than 2,000 people. I'm just giving this an example. That population should have increased today. More than that, if only there is no injustice in this country. Because the system itself, you know, made the judiciary, I mean, in terms of academics now, such that, you know, not everybody can come into, the, to, into it. For instance, thank God that God just made a way for us to be able to do it. I did my part-time law in the Lagos State University that's for six years. And I came out with the same bar certificate that people who went on regular courses did. And I am speaking today. I don't think that if we all pass through the same process that I passed through, and uh, uh, people like us also were able to pass the bar examinations, what makes the difference between the young and the old? But today, they have blocked that avenue for people who are interested by barring the part-time law uh, school. I mean, people study on part-time basis. What's so special there? All they don't, they don't want more people there. 
You can imagine many more lawyers that are in this country but cannot train as a lawyer simply because they are they have passed the younger ages. People like us would have been deprived of that opportunity. Today I thank God, but I still feel that that barricade they put there is injustice. Because it is not every one of us that can have the opportunity to go straight to college and straight to the tertiary institution. But anytime that we are now privileged, we are interested and we have uh, opportunity, we should be able to, or we are able, we should be able to key into that. Not only that, there is ter serious injustice, even in the, uh, in the NBA group. I was so terribly disappointed when I saw what happened to the previous NBA chairman, the one before the current one. I was watching the, not the media, media, I was weeping in my heart. The war that raged between the followership and the leadership, all bordering upon corruption. Because by the analysis, when the chairman will come to defend himself, you will discover that people wanted the hard-earned money of the people to be spent the way they were spending it before. And the chairman stood against it. I knew he didn't do the second time. I remember when one of them called me during the when they were going to be electing more uh, new chairman this during this last session, you know, conversing for votes. I told them what happened to the one that is there. I heard what is going on in the in the at that place. I'm not happy. How can we be talking of corruption amongst people who are supposed to uphold justice in this country? That's another part of it. Corruption is everywhere. Today, we cannot be just talking about injustice in isolation. He said judiciary is just one. Daily Faro to me, for instance, he looks at the political something, election and so on. He was part of the system. Look, my favorite candidate is Bola, President Bola Amen Tinubu. I have never missed words and I have my reasons. Everybody has his own choices, his choice to make. I've never hidden that. But he is completely against him because of his own experiences. And he said that it, to the point that he threatened before the election that if he won, if President Bola meant to won, that he will leave this country. I think there are two of them that said so. Baba Ode George and Agbalaya Lagba Amaje Ojoyodale. Baba mellowed down when it became necessary to mellow down. And Dele Farad means that he will leave this country if President Bola Ahmed Tinubu won. And President Bola Ahmed Tinubu won. And then we were expecting him to leave this country. And it now came out to interpret it to us that, look, come, that he did not agree that President Bola Ahmed Tinubu won. Whether it is a de facto or the jury <laughs> leadership, that has it. that's his own stand because he was also an insider. I wouldn't say whether he's right or he's wrong, but all I know is that in a race like this, there are sometimes you put you throw justice overboard, and it could be there is nobody who has become the president of this nation that didn't come in through rigging or through manipulation through money influence through whatever. What the Lefaro to me is saying is that a time should come that meritocracy should be, merit should take precedence over uh, the various influences that we are using, factors that we are using to elect our leaders. That does not remove uh, President Bola Tinubu from becoming the president because he has been destined to be. That's my own thinking. Because from what this guy went through in this world, Nobody knew that he could be. But it pleased God to be. So it is. But subsequently, we should move forward by beginning to look at merit. You know? That's why 
and follow to me, daily follow to me, praise Allah. I mean, quote the Bible a lot, thank God. But we should also understand that nobody gets to a place to accept the Lord puts him there. So, what we are saying is that let us make sure we identify the people that we know can deliver. I don't, honestly speaking, if you ask me, it's just that the situation has become so terrible. People like our Baba Baba Sanjay should not be the people that will be talking in terms of politics today. Yes, I recognize uh, Obi. He has tried in his state and he wants to try it in the national, uh, national. I recognize him. But the people that really spoiled the political arena, who prevented uh, Aola from becoming the president, who? So, injustice. Injustice. Um, a lot of people have lost their lives because of things like this. So, Dele Faro Timi, this is how it happened in South Africa. When um, President ex-president Nelson Mandela started this campaign. And he never gave up. Faro Timi is not giving up. I don't blame him because what is in us, those who are gifted naturally to pursue justice, what is in us will never allow us to sleep. Did Daesho Laren stop his activism? You gave him a position until he was messed up by the government. It was only then, towards the tail end of his life, that now kept quiet. It is painful that when somebody speaks up, then you, you, you begin to torture him. You begin to... <clears throat> but you cannot silence that voice. Because, for instance, I always say, I am restless unless I speak the truth. Whether in the family, whether in the church, whether in the office, or anywhere, any social gathering, you find myself. I want justice. Dele Faro to me is saying the same thing that we got it wrong. I know he knows that it will take time. I love the way he analyzed it. Because all along, honestly speaking, I never understood Dele Faro to me's standpoint. I thought he just hated Bola Ahmed Tinumbu and that it was actually the, that the, the, the campaign was personal. I can now see from his explanation that look, it, he only used the judiciary that he knew as an uh, as a stepping stone to address this and see what happened. What could have happened that could make Somebody like Papa Fibola to want to just silence that voice. And unfortunately, he, is, he Baba, is close to power. Tony Elumelutu is <laughs> in the power corridor. And it's as if it is stage managed that, look, everything must be done to put this person in jail. It is true that Nigeria has not advanced. The day... Um, MKO, though he himself has his problem, he's one of the major problems, even though I love him and everybody who voted for his own case is like, hey, God's vengeance. That's the truth. It's like God's vengeance because we we all we forgave Abiola for what he did to Aolawa and to polit polit for the political arena generally. We, we forgive, but karma came. You cannot destroy one person and say you want to ascend the truth. Instead, somebody else who never expected it came and somebody who has benefited in the military and all that, that is it, came to take that position. And we know what Nigeria went through. There is injustice. He tried to make amends later. Like so everybody forgave him. But what of Kama? Kama did not forgive the role he played in the political ambition of late Obama. That's why every one of us should learn. Those who are manipulators, you should learn. 
If God was, will not have you in place, nobody can put you there. Do your best, struggle for it. So, that is one. So, President Mandela was incarcerated for 37 years. The day Abiola was declaring that on his mandate he stood, and eventually he was in prison, I said, oh, I said, this man made a mistake that Nigeria has not advanced to the level of South Africa where uh, he will go and come back. It is unfortunate. I, I felt sorry for him that he got with. I rather would prefer that he went on exile that time and be staging whatever I want to stage. They all keep quiet until another opportunity comes. That was my stand. But he went. Not Nigeria. It was he still is Nigeria is still living in a state of nature. Brutish, blunt, and um what other language? The survivor of the fittest. Everybody wants to grab. Nobody is looking at justice at all. It's not a question of justice. How much you can influence, how much money you have to get there. Nobody will get to that political arena today without heavy money, without the influence of the West. None. Nobody. You can see that all of a sudden, we, we came back to Nigeria, we healed it. <laughs> I won't be surprised if it has an influence. Okay, even if it is not an influence, direct influence of the colonial people. I believe that, you know, the colonial mentality we had is what we brought out there. Because we felt the wordings are good, everything is good, and it, truly it reflects the position of Nigeria, but I would rather that we coin it in another way, even if we use uh, a rise of contract and put it aside and say we want to fashion out something new. I would have fashioned out something new using the wordings of that Nigeria we held it because truly the composer of that Nigeria we held it honestly did he got inspiration from God. That's, it expresses and explains our situation and what we needed to do. But it's, it's like, oh, we went back to the ancient days. Because it looks minor, but the uh, anthem of a nation is the soul of a nation. So we are, go we are back. And the British will be very happy to have that. So what am I saying in essence? Faro Timi has laid the foundation. Thank God that for the days of social media, he is able to be popular like this because we are on the social media. And the oppressors never stop oppressing. And they want to continue to oppress until their dying day. And their days are over. I've said it without time. Children will ask parents questions. And any parent that, that cannot come down and explain to their children why, what, and what, and what is done, and why is not done, and do it satisfactorily well. That may be the end of the relationship between that parent and the children. Then, these political, political leaders, it is ridiculous for Baba Fe, for Baba, Fe, Baba Lola to try to even silence this voice. And this guy got everything right by saying he is not, I, I love what he said. he said. It may not necessarily be him that will implement it, but for him is to put the matter on the table for us to be discussed, and that's what we've, we've, we've lost in this country. If we are to be true to ourselves, if justice was to prevail, must we struggle to say that Southeast should have a president ever since today? Now, in the injustice in Nigeria does not favor them, they themselves do not favor themselves. I did a video the other time on what they can do. Instead of ruminating on that video to say we should gather together, nobody will give it to you. You are working in an environment where there is justice, injustice. And amongst your own selves, you are like Nehemiah group then. That Nehemiah was trying to liberate the whole uh, Israel. And the people themselves were oppressing themselves. Nobody will give in for another. And you want to make it. You can see. 
Those two sources, problem were different. One of them was commenting to me that I was a fool. Who is a fool now? The way things are going, unless there is social justice, unless all the other south uh, west, south south, and not all the north agrees that okay, let us give the south east this thing this time. Unless they agree and follow that, south east may for life may not have presidency. And even if they did that, and if they now against themselves and they cannot agree on a common candidate, and they now sell out. I remember Kalu was saying, I would rather back the North then. What a personal ambition. And he did. And see what happened. Then the South South, the Southwest took it. It doesn't belong to the Southwest. But in political arena. They don't, they don't bother about just That's why they always disregard the judiciary that would be the last voice, the last hope of the man. This is what Dele Farotini is saying. It may take long and the revolution has started. One thing I need to warn about in my little way, how many followers do I have? And like I say, I'm not doing for fun, but let me just air my own voice in the, let me air my own view in my little enclave. <clears throat> I'm not even doing it for money. I'm not doing it for fame. I was even surprised that I had up to a hundred, uh, close to a hundred subscribers in one day, just because I'm able to contribute my own quota. I want to be part and parcel of people who are building this nation. I, it is my nation. Bad as you may think it is, I still would say I benefited from it in my little way because they tortured me about me self. I was rugged. I should go to secondary school straight. No opportunity to do so. I should get to anywhere I want to get to. I should, you know, but I didn't give up. And the GOs in the religious sector of the country, they are also, they want to put my, suppress my destiny in marriage, in um, academics. God help me. I did not agree with them. So in all corners, when I was as a student, when I was to read, I was a student that is working and studying at the same time. I, they would switch off the light. I bought candle. I bought lantern. I slept outside. I bought um, uh, mosquito coil. I, I used my mat outside. But today, I'm sleeping in my room. Not that I'm so well, I'm so uh, wealthy. What, what wealth do I have? How much do I have in my account? I'm not even among those who, whom you boast of that has 500,000 in his account at a time. That I can say I, for, I forget there. No. But I, I moved forward. And I thank God that I'm able to speak to you today. If I didn't go to school, how would I have operated the phone I'm using? I would have read some or, or, or interpreted some of these things that I'm saying. So, Nigeria treated me shabbily, but I was rugged. That is why, throughout my life, I'm using my experiences to try to inspire others. Don't give up, don't give up, don't give up. I'm not the type that I'm now able to feed myself. And I want you to be walking the terrain where I came from. You should single yourself out. Okay, what will you say you have today that I don't have? Professionally, I have four professions, chartered in the four professions. Religiously, I'm a pastor. In my community, I'm a chief. And I put all these things down, away. I said them, they don't mean anything to me, but thank God that I have them so that you will not become my teen god that i will say oh this this one is a god no they are they are minor the greatest thing that concerned me is justice to the poor how i can do my little whatever to make sure that the generations coming after us are they themselves can do better that's my focus and that's the focus of Daily Faro to me. If Nigeria is good, it's good for us all. Why will you be running? Am I happy that, you know, after all the efforts, 
that my children cannot get what I can call lucrative employment or I mean nobody is happy about that with all my labels so do I have to be I mean may God help us daily Pharaoh Timmy has come to stay and no voice, nobody except God and God is not a, not a God of injustice we are suffering in this nation Today, a bag of rice for 130,000 naira in Ekiti State. They were bringing fertilizer to Ekiti. A leader of, um, the, of a group. Out of, I were told, 12 trailers. We farmers were waiting. A leader of that group alone took away 12, uh, two, two trailer loads. Could not be explained for what, what even happened to the remaining um 10 we don't know i farmed cows ravaged my everything that i, I mean took them for food is that justice after all my labor i was frustrated out of farming that is nigeria for you should it continue to happen no we have to sit down and debate the southeast thing we are talking about how long will they continue to wait how long will they continue to struggle? Forget about the disunity amongst them. If we all agree to say that those the Southeast will have it and no other zone will struggle with it, then if they like, let them continue to fight. After all, when we have the Senate president, they change their leadership over time, say one or two times. That's their own issue, internal issue. But are we ready to let go at the national level? Injustice everywhere. Injustice. Parent to children, children to parents. Injustice in offices. Injustice in the church of God, where you least expected that it will be. So what are we talking about? Sorry, the memory is uh, off. Let me stop here. I think I've said something. We'll continue later. God bless you. Pharaoh Timmy has come to stay. And the seed is sowing today. May take several years to mature. It will fruit and we will all enjoy it. God bless you.